Welcome to this episode of Electrochemistry with Elango. Today, we're diving into synchrotron radiation. As someone whose PhD research heavily relies on these powerful facilities, I'm here to simplify what synchrotrons are and how they're revolutionizing science. Let's get started. Ever imagine having X-ray vision? Like being able to see right through objects? Yeah, I think we've all wished for that at some point. Well, in the world of science, there's something pretty close, and it's called synchrotron radiation. It's not quite X-ray vision in the comic book sense, but uh, right. it does let us see things we couldn't otherwise, like the structure of atoms and molecules. So it's kind of like a super-powered microscope. Yeah, exactly. And that's exactly what we're diving deep into today, this incredible tool that's revolutionizing scientific research. I'm ready to be amazed. I think you will be. So first things first, what exactly is synchrotron radiation? Well, uh, it's a very special kind of light. And when I say light, I'm not just talking about the kind we see. Right. Synchrotron radiation covers a vast spectrum from infrared to x-rays. Oh, wow. So it's way beyond just the visible light. Right, exactly. And because it covers such a wide range, it's incredibly useful for studying all sorts of things, from the tiniest viruses to the composition of distant stars. That's wild. But how did scientists even discover this incredible light source? It's actually a pretty cool story. You see, it all started um, kind of by accident. Back in 1947, scientists were working with these massive machines called synchrotrons. These were basically particle accelerators designed to study the behavior of high energy particles. Okay, so they were focused on the particles themselves, not necessarily the light? Exactly. But as these particles, usually electrons, zipped around the synchrotron, they were forced to change direction by powerful magnets. And as they did, they gave off this intense burst of light synchrotron radiation. So it was like a side effect, an unexpected bonus. Precisely. And once scientists realized the potential of this light, it wasn't long before they started building synchrotrons specifically for generating it. That's amazing. So we went from accidentally discovering it to purposely creating it. It's kind of like how penicillin was discovered by accident. Yeah, great analogy. And just like penicillin revolutionized medicine, synchrotron radiation has completely changed how we do science. It's allowed us to peer into the microscopic world with unprecedented detail and precision. I'm already getting the sense that this accidental discovery turned out to be a game changer. So how has the technology evolved since those early days? Well, the earliest synchrotrons, the ones that were initially used for particle physics, those are considered first-generation synchrotrons. Then came the second generation, which were built specifically to produce this light. Makes sense. These were more powerful than their predecessors, but still not quite as bright as what we have today. So what are we using now? Now we're in the era of third-generation synchrotrons. And what sets these apart is their use of these really cool devices called uh, wigglers and undulators. Wigglers and undulators. Those names sound a bit, um, well, whimsical for such high-tech equipment. They do, don't they? But they're incredibly powerful tools. They're basically specialized magnets that force the electrons in the synchrotron to wiggle or undulate as they travel along their path. And this wiggling motion is what makes the light so intense. Exactly. It's like shaking a flashlight really fast. The more you shake it, the brighter the light appears. Ah, I get it. So those wigglers and undulators are the secret sauce behind the super bright light that modern synchrotrons are known for. Absolutely. And to give you an idea of just how bright we're talking, the light from a synchrotron can be millions of times brighter than the sun. Millions of times brighter than the sun. That's just mind boggling. And it's this intense light that makes synchrotron radiation so valuable for research, right? It's one of the reasons, yeah. But it's not just about the intensity. Synchrotron light also has some other pretty remarkable properties. For example, it covers a continuous spectrum of wavelengths, from infrared to x-rays. So scientists can basically choose whichever wavelength they need for their specific experiment. Exactly. It's like having a toolbox with every imaginable tool. You can pick the perfect one for the job, whether you're studying the structure of a protein or analyzing the composition of a painting. Okay, so it's super intense and incredibly versatile. Are there any other advantages that make synchrotron light so special? Well, there's also its incredible focus. Synchrotron light is what we call highly collimated, meaning the light rays are almost perfectly parallel. So it's like a laser beam. Exactly like a laser beam, but for a whole range of light. And this laser-like focus allows scientists to target their experiments with extreme precision. 
That's fascinating. So we've got the intensity, the wide spectrum, and the incredible focus. Are there any other features that make synchrotron light stand out? Oh, there's more. It's also polarized, meaning the light waves vibrate in a specific direction. Okay, and why is that important? Polarization can reveal a lot about the properties of the material being studied. For instance, it can tell us how the molecules in a sample are arranged or how they interact with each other. Wow, so it's like having an extra layer of information. Exactly. And there's one more thing. Synchrotron light can be produced in these incredibly short bursts called pulses. Pulses? Yeah, imagine like a strobe light flashing on and off incredibly fast. These pulses are so short that they can freeze motion on a molecular level. So scientists can basically watch things happen in super slow motion. Exactly. It's like having a high-speed camera for the microscopic world. This light is seriously impressive. But before we get too carried away with all the cool things it can do, can we take a step back and talk about how it's actually made? Sure. So remember those synchrotrons we talked about earlier, those big circular machines? Well, inside those machines is where the magic happens. It all starts with, um, you guessed it, electrons. The electrons, those tiny little particles. The very same. First, these electrons are generated and then accelerated to incredibly high speeds, almost the speed of light, in a linear accelerator, or LANAC for short. Nearly the speed of light. That's got to be fast. Oh yeah, it is. From there, they enter a booster ring, which, you know, gives them even more of a speed boost. And finally, they're injected into the main storage ring. The storage ring? Yeah, it's basically a big hollow ring where the electrons are stored, constantly circulating at nearly the speed of light. Okay, so they're just zipping around this ring. Yeah. And this is where they start emitting the synchrotron light, right? Exactly. Inside the storage ring are powerful magnets. And these magnets force the electrons to constantly change direction as they travel. Okay, I'm following. And it's this change in direction that makes them emit the light. You got it. It's a bit like swinging a ball on a string. As the ball swings around, it experiences a force that pulls it inward. And it's this inward force that causes the electrons to emit the light. That's a great analogy. Hmm. So the faster the electrons go and the more they're forced to turn, the brighter the light they emit, right? Right. And that's where those wigglers and undulators come in. They're strategically placed around the storage ring to make the electrons wiggle even more, thus enhancing the intensity of the light. It's like a carefully choreographed dance, all to produce this incredible light. So once the light is produced, where does it go? Well, that's where the beam lines come in. Think of beam lines as specialized pipelines that channel the light to different experimental stations located around the storage ring. Okay, so like a network of pipes carrying the light to different labs. Yeah, sort of. And each experimental station is equipped with all sorts of specialized instruments and detectors, all designed to make use of the unique properties of synchrotron light. So it's like a one-stop shop for scientists offering all these different tools powered by this incredible light source. It's amazing to think that a single synchrotron can support so many different types of research. Yeah, it really is remarkable, and the applications are just astounding. For example, in material science, synchrotron light is used to study the structure of new materials at the atomic level. So things like stronger, lighter materials for airplanes or more efficient solar cells? Exactly. And in biology, it's helping us understand the intricate workings of proteins and viruses, which could lead to new drugs and therapies. That's amazing. What about in archaeology? I've heard that synchrotron light can be used to study ancient artifacts. Oh, absolutely. Synchrotron light can penetrate deep into objects without damaging them, allowing researchers to analyze the composition and structure of ancient artifacts like pottery, paintings, and even fossils. It's like looking back in time, revealing secrets hidden for centuries. It really is. It's incredible to think that by controlling light with such precision, we can unlock so many secrets about the world around us, from the tiniest atoms to the vastness of space. It really is. And it all started with a serendipitous discovery, a testament to the power of scientific curiosity. It makes you wonder what other amazing discoveries are just waiting to be made. What other mysteries Thank synchrotron you for watching light this will video. help us unravel in the As an active synchrotron Maybe user, someday we'll even achieve I conduct that experiments at synchrotron facilities Maybe and explore their incredible the potential in research. Is incredibly bright, if you have any questions or doubts about synchrotrons or their applications, so for all of you feel free to drop there, them in the comments below. For the next I'd be happy to help. Synchrotron light. If you found this you video helpful or interesting, please consider subscribing to the channel and supporting our journey to make complex science accessible to everyone. Don't forget to like and share, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for tuning in.